in Pitapalooza, we thought it would be a really nice thing to do because this is our fifth Pitapalooza. And as I think John um, and Maria mentioned earlier, we originally thought we'd try and do something different. This wasn't quite the different that we had in mind at the time, but it's a great different. Um, and one of the things we wanted to do was to bring back some of our keynote speakers from previous years, um, just to, to do anything really, anything Pitapalooza. It might be an update on uh, the talk that they gave then or something new that they're doing with PIDs, whatever whatever they want. So we are really delighted to um, welcome uh, uh, a keynote speaker from each of the four previous Pitapaloozas. So we have Carly Strasser representing 2016, Melissa Haindel representing 2018 because 2016 was in November and 2018 was in January. So there was only really a year between them. I'm very proud of myself for managing to not mess that up. Um, Gareth Murphy, <laughs> Murphy was um, Dublin in 2019, and then Catherine Kaiser is 2020 in Lisbon. I think I've got that all right. Um, so without further ado, I will hand over to Carly and um, put the focus on you, Carly. Okay, can you hear me all right? Yep. All right, yep. I'm gonna see if I can share my screen, see if that works. Can you see my screen? Great. Okay. So uh, 2016, the very first Petapalooza. Um, I'm Carly Strausser. I currently work at the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative as a program manager for open science. And um, I've managed to um, go to a couple of the Petapaloozas, not all of them, but I was really excited to be at that very first one. And it was fun to go back and look at the slides as well as the photos that I had from that event, including one of me and John Shadaki uh, at the Blue Lagoon um, heated pool things that they have on the way to the on the way home from the airport. So that was pretty great. Um, let's see. So uh, this is the official um, poster for the Petapalooza event, and um, you can see we really leaned into the to the conference concert kind of uh, atmosphere there and um, had lots of great speakers from all over. Uh, the presentation I gave, I gave was um, the wrap up session at the very end and it was called Reaching Nirvana, the Future of Persistent Identifiers. You can see there November 10th, 2016. And um, the goal of the presentation was really to wrap up the entire conference and kind of summarize it. Uh, and the reason that there's this homage to Nirvana is of course because Pitapalooza is um, the result of Lollapalooza. So this was a slide that I presented, which was helping the folks that maybe didn't already have a good knowledge of Lollapalooza, what that actual event was. Um, and so it's, it had been around since 91 and uh, has experienced a revival in 2003, although I'm guessing it's uh, not currently running given the current situation. Um, unfortunately, 2016 also had another major event in the middle of the conference. Uh, Pitapalooza was um, influenced slightly in its mood by the fact that Trump was elected uh, while we were there. And um, we managed to, to go out and drink beers and have a good time anyway. And it was okay to be able to um, experience kind of the, the, the sea change in American politics with um, good friends. And I just want to point out that um, Trisha spent a lot of time in the bar that night telling us to wait for Florida. And I really wish that the outcome had been different, but um, we appreciate your um, bright eyed attitude, Tricia. Uh, so we, we managed to crawl out of our um, sadness and desperation to continue the Pitapalooza event. Uh, we were fragile, you might say. Um, oh, just a quick note, just like my original presentation, this one has um, images from artists that have performed at Lollapalooza over the years. So the, we were all fragile, um, but we were alive and we were okay. And we were gonna forge ahead and continue our um, exciting discussions of persistent identifiers. Um, and you know, we were among our people. Uh, I have some screenshots that I captured here, um, some great ones like, how would you explain PIDs without using jargon or technical terms? And uh, Nicole's response was, don't call them PIDs. So that's a tough one. We clearly have leaned into the PID um, vocabulary. Um, but there's also these great ones like um, DOI is a DOI for an object, not an identifier for a digital object, and the differences between references and citing. And I think these are all just good tweets to demonstrate we were among our people um, geeking out about identifiers. 
Uh, I used album covers to cover the major um, themes of the of the actual event. And you'll recognize, I'm sure that a lot of these are also being hit on in the talks today and um, the remaining talks for this conference, but things like granularity, how much do we really wanna dig in to give identifiers at what level? Uh, there was a lot about um, identifying things, all the things, um, everything from a research cruise to the very sample that the research cruise created and the, the uh, instrument that it went out on, how do we identify everything? There was a lot about uh, how, how much everyone learned. So just not realizing that um, PIDs are ubiquitous and that there's lots of variability and there's lots of ways to use them. Um, and then there was also a focus on user outreach. And so really trying to make sure that particularly researchers and those that might benefit from understanding PIDs a little better, that we find ways to educate them uh, and reach out to them to meet them where they're at. The last three were about um, interoper interoperability, so machine readability in particular, and how do we get those PIDs to kind of talk to one another to really create that knowledge network. Um, responsibilities in terms of who's responsible for creating good metadata, how do we make sure that it's valuable, uh, as, as useful as possible. And then finally, ideal versus reality. So the things that we wish were the case in the PID space versus what's actually the space. So um, the reality that we found was that there are a lot of stakeholders. It's sometimes hard to message um, about PIDs. There are a lot of legacy systems that are causing, were causing, they may not be anymore as much, uh, issues, lots of competing interests, and um, there's never enough metadata. And that's my last slide. So that's 2016 in a nutshell. Wonderful. Thank you so much. That was great. Um, okay, now we were over to 2018 and uh, Melissa. Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm actually, I did find my slides and I'm gonna um, share them. And let's see, remind us all what we talked about in 2018. Unless you can do it in five minutes. <laughs> um, yep, uh, it will be five minutes. So I just wanted to so can you see my screen? Did I lose you? Nope. Um, Sorry, we're all set. We can see it's not in presentation mode, but that's fine, I think. Okay. All right. Terrific. Uh, here we go. All right. So basically, um, what I spoke about in 2018 was was really you know, trying to look at identifiers through the, the eye of the beholder and how, how challenging this is from the perspective of data integration um, and in biomedicine. And in particular, um, you know, really finding sort of treasure, if you will, um, in the context of biomedicine involves aligning different knowledge modalities and perspectives. And if you've watched The, the Goonies, um, you, you remember this, um, uh, this stone at the bottom there that allowed the sort of lining up of things that were, you know, annotations um, that, uh, you know, were found on the map with the visual from, you know, the, the kid um, with the real world, with the real world and being able to sort of line them all up. And, um, and that it takes all these different data modalities and perspectives to be able to do that. Um, and fundamentally, identifiers are, are really the key, um, uh, the sort of bedrock of, of science, if you will. Um, and so I just wanted to show one other um, uh, quick a few slides here. One, one um, kind of thought about uh, scholarly output and thinking about sort of the traditional literature um, you know, it's fairly straightforward to figure out, especially in, in such times, you know, how to manage versioned identifiers for preprints and, you know, um, publication types of artifacts. And we now have data citations and the JAT standards and things like this. But as we as we work more towards other kinds of non-traditional scholarly output um, content that that, you know, can come in large files or be very complex. Um, you know, it's almost non-existent. Um, we think of this as a sort of wild west of, I of identifiers and it's really, um, really crufty out there. And so that doing that sort of reconciliation um, makes it really, really challenging to actually do, do the science. And then one, one last um, thought 
is is really, uh, and this kind of comes back to this, um, in the eye of the beholder, it depends on what you want to do with all that cruft and all those different kind of um, tumbleweeds out there. And, and so sometimes you can only see the top of the buildings you can't see what's really underneath but really you know um and my my um rendering here isn't, isn't working from these old slides back from 2018 but you know basically if these are all different data resources with their crufty tumbleweed identifiers we really want to try to connect them and um you know let me find this other slide it's really fundamentally um about building a map between them um and the, the identifiers that are present in these different resources, um, you know, aren't representing things in the same way. And their identifiers um, that are, are referenced in one resource, um, you know, are out of date with another or aren't versioned properly or have a, a, um, annotations on them that are not consistent across sources. And so it becomes very difficult to build that kind of roadmap across these different resources, especially if you don't um, have the underlying knowledge of, of how they were put together. Uh, in the first place. And so um, in my keynote later this afternoon, I'm, I, I, so in this keynote in 2018, I talked a lot about how this actually affects rare disease research and why it matters that the identifier provisioning is really robust so that we can actually integrate all of these data and help inform uh, disease diagnosis. And today I'm gonna give you an update on, in my keynote about some new work that we're doing that pertains to harmonizing identifiers relating uh, to disease and working with the global community um, to try to improve the, um, the landscape for disease uh, representation and their identifiers. So I will stop sharing there. Okay. Wonderful, thank you so much, Melissa. And yes, please do stay on for Melissa's keynote after this, which I know is gonna be fascinating. So look forward to hearing more then. Okay, in the meantime, over to you, um, Gareth. Hang on. Oh, there we go. Couldn't hear you. We're good now. Okay, thank you. All right, all right, so thank you. So 2019 in Dublin was my second pit of loser because I was I missed the one in Reykjavik, but I, I did manage to go to Girona. So I had some great memories there, reenacting Game of Thrones scenes <laughs> in front of a fascinated audience. Um, but um, it was. But it was nice to be back in Dublin. Dublin's my hometown. It's not the Dublin of Dublin Core, which is Dublin, Ohio, but it has a special significance for me. And we started the, the meeting with some pipe music, and traditional music, and I, I talked a bit about my, the title of my talk was PIDs, Petabytes, and Neutrons. And I was really focusing <laughs> on the need for um, persistent identifiers and uh, a better way to, to access the unstructured metadata that we have when we do scientific experiments. You know, we try to describe our experiments in a sort of narrative form, but we also want to extract um, metadata fields and uh, have a way of tabulating the results and tabulating experiments and looking across many different results across many different instruments and, and, um, and experiments that we do. And so looking back at 2019, it seems a little bit like a lifetime ago because we're all in the room together <laughs> and we could talk and have these conversations <laughs> and we didn't have this, um, this digital separation. But it's also placed a, a, a bigger emphasis for me. I mean, I've had a personal transition as well. I moved from a job I was working in neutron facility in 2019. I've since moved to a pharma company called Nova Nordisk. I'll talk about that tomorrow. Um, and, um, and in the intervening period with the pandemic and the lockdown and working from home, it's made a, a greater emphasis on the need for ac people accessing data from home, the frustration of people wanting to work with their experiments, not being able to go to the lab and trying to look back over their legacy data and then finding their legacy data is very difficult to, to access, to find, to access and to reuse and other people's data. And so there's a lot of um, fr frustration <laughs> in the current time. And that is I, particularly evident in the sort of race for the vaccine. And um, although in our company, we don't work on the, this particular vaccine, but it, it is something that people are we're aware of that there's a huge pressure to get um, results done. And a lot of this involves remote work with data and metadata. So that is, um, just a little bit about my experience. The, um, the general meeting in, in Dublin was fascinating and I learned a lot about the different initiatives, including Freya and, and Dryad and many others. And yeah, so it was a fantastic experience. So I'm looking forward to repeating it <laughs> in person, but at the same time, it has uh, it is really great that we were able to have this digital uh, pitapalooza and, uh, and meet all the same people again, except in, in virtual form. So yes, that's about it for me. So. Thank you. 
Thanks, Gareth. I think it's probably fair to say that the collective Pitapalooza mind was blown in Dublin by the sheer quantity of persistent identifiers um, uh, that you were talking about. Uh, so may, maybe slightly fewer in your new position, but anyway. It was a, it was Unfortunately, it's the other direction. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Well, come along to Gareth's um, keynote, which is, I think, um, sadly, probably the middle of the night for most of us in the US. Um, but for those of you in Europe, um, uh, definitely uh, plan, to, plan to be there. It'll be great. And last but definitely not least, Catherine. Um, you up and hey, with your fabulous sparkly background yeah uh i saw a note about a beach ball you know um I, <laughs> I i hope that whoever inherited the unicorn beach ball can bring it out at some point all i can offer you at this point is a cat toy which i'm sure many of you you know have handy uh in your current spaces um but uh, yeah, last year was my first time to attend and I got to share my uh, dreams with you all about um, the uh, future that I'd like to see. And, and I have to say that so far, um, I'm really encouraged by what I'm seeing, especially at the country level. I heard some nice presentations this morning about what's going on in Finland and in the UK. And um, so what I did was just look back through the presentations from last year uh, to kind of highlight certain aspects that really uh, gave me a lot of excitement about continuing to participate in this community. And uh, one of them was um, by the um, folks of Metadata 2020. So John Chidaki and Laura Pallione uh, did a talk on metadata activism. And uh, I think that that's one of the things that I think is, is really nice about uh, what's going on here is just the advocacy. And, um, you know, one of the slides that really stuck out to me was, was really more about, uh, you know, more, more action and less talk. And so I see that, you know, there has been a lot of action in the last year, despite everything that's going on. And so I found that really encouraging. Um, I also really enjoyed uh, uh, one given by Todd Carpenter uh, that was titled uh, Principles, Principles, Who Needs Principles? Uh, this is a PID party. And he really uh, helped me to understand uh, the importance of having that long-term view and that target uh, to really keep people from um, spending a lot of effort uh, in directions that, um, you know, may make it more difficult in particular around the whole uh, concepts of in interoperability. So even though my particular interest, as I expressed last year, is really about the findability, um, and that has certain, you know, uh, principal frameworks that are involved there, um, the learning more about the principles and what uh, NISO does was, was very uh, helpful as well. And then finally, the last one I want to just highlight among the many fine ones that were uh, given last year uh, was one by, uh, and I'm sorry if I don't pronounce the name correctly, Alexander Kujoff uh, was uh, PIDs for Open Data. So in particular, what I went looking for and I, I have spent some time working on in this past year is, is ideas around linked data approaches uh, to uh, kind of smooth this whole process and this eventual future. Uh, so he gave a really nice uh, talk about the grid PIDs and how those are being used for linked data approaches. So um, that's kind of um, my favorites. And so what I'll be talking about uh, tomorrow is um, kind of just some ideas that I, that I took from last year that I've been working on this year and that in particular, the whole pandemic has really highlighted the need to really speed research in a way um, that uh, metadata can uh, be the accelerant we need. So that was a, the title of an article that I was, I was pleased to be able to write with several other folks here. And so I'll be talking a little bit uh, more about that tomorrow. Great, thank you very much. Um, so let's see if I can make everybody the same size. We do have just a few minutes. So if anybody has a question or a comment, um, please feel free to add them either in the chat or the question. Oh, yeah, I've got one popped up right away. Thank you. Um, so from John Chitaki, when we started Pidapalooza, it was unique, but now people talk about PIDs at Force 11, RDA, Metadata 2020, everywhere, et cetera. Did we achieve our goal? Should we burn out or fade away or keep roaring on? Okay, <laughs> panel, over to you. What do you think? 
I'm going to I'm going to uh, jump say that, uh, keep keep the flame going. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Anybody else have yeah. have strong feelings? I I I really enjoyed Pitta Palooza because um, you know I think it one of the things that those other communities don't maybe do as well um, is have the focus focus on persistent identifiers and how they're actually provisioned and managed and used in very different fields and contexts. Um, and I think that, you know, we we do better to not reinvent the wheel if we can actually share across domains. And, and from that very technical perspective, those other communities are great, but they're all focused on very broad topics and scholarly communication and, and persistent identifiers are just such a small part of, of their scope. So I think it's really helpful to have this um, very technical narrow scope on identifiers but the very broad cross-disciplinary perspective. Yeah, I think I would agree with that. I think even now um, having, you know, evangelists kind of spread the message about this, just say, hey, you scientists are down in your cave, which admit we like to be in our little caves, right? Um, there's some cool stuff up here that's going on. You don't need to reinvent this. This is what's already been uh, done in other places that you can um, kind of adopt or, or advance uh, without reinventing it from scratch, which is what we tend to think that we need to do. Carly, Gareth, any, any anything you'd like to add to that? Hang on. Yes, sorry. It's hard to get to that mute button. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I think that we should definitely continue um, Pitapalooza in particular, um, partly at least because I missed the last two and I really want to go to one again. So. Uh, you know, for selfish reasons, but also uh, there is a real value in kind of um, zeroing in on uh, PIDs in general and having that cross domain knowledge that gets. So I, I just uh, somebody had suggested something about best practices. And while it's um, been a few years since we published it, I did um, put a link to this community manifesto um, titled Identifiers for the 21st Century, which is really a set of best practices. Um, and I think what would be really great is if the community was interested in thinking about what would we change now? Um, I think it was back in, let's see, what was the year? 2017. So has anything changed since, since the community wrote this paper? Um, it took a number of years to write this paper at the time, uh, but it has been, you know, four years or so since that came out. So I'll uh, be curious if anybody has any thoughts, please tweet them or post them. It might be actually cool to do kind of an annual PID report just to kind of get people used to, you know, if they can attend Pitapalooza, you know, that, that we just, you know, kind of bring uh, people up to date on what's been going on because it is very rapidly evolving. Yep. Um, Gareth, did you want to? Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I, my my view on it is definitely we should continue with Pitapalooza. So um, I particularly think that a lot of the new newer stuff that we hear at Pitapalooza, then you, if you go to RDA or some of the other meetings, you can hear people following on on the, on the topics that come up here first. So I like the uh, the the newness and novelty that that comes with Pitapalooza. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in favor of continuing. Obviously, I'm a little biased, perhaps, but uh, yeah. I would like I think to think it's probably all. Well. Plan for some sort of end of life thing, like by when shall our work be complete? I mean, I don't know if that's 2030, I don't know, but just, just to have a target of, you know, when can we retire it and, and just have it in Tahiti and celebrate our accomplishments? I don't know. I suspect that's where John was coming from. Carly, I just wanted to check that you had said everything you wanted to on the on the topic. <laughs> sure, yeah, I was all excited. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Okay, well, it is right on the hour. So I am going to wrap up this session and say thank you so, so much to all of you, especially thank you to Carly, Catherine and Gareth, who are now going to be leaving us. Melissa is going to be staying on to do her um, keynote session. And I, I hope you'll all be able to stay with us for that. Um, and yeah, thank you all very much. That was a really nice 